people, am I getting old? At a start in the video and, or I started the video and I was just, ah, didn't think it was very good. And I made a mistake. Very important mistake. So I just start all over. I wanted to do a second video on the false prophet. My last video was about the false prophet. And of course, if you hopefully got it right, the false prophet is the United States. False prophet is not a religious system. It's a prophet, but not a prophet for a religious system. It's the prophet for a political system. How do I know? Because we know that the false prophet is also called the beast out of the earth. And as that we know as such we do know that a beast is a political system. It's an empire. So when we read uh, Revelation 13 about this beast out of the earth which is political system, which is an empire. Every beast is an empire or a political, huge political system. So think about this last empire that will be present when the Armageddon, uh, Armageddon war is going to happen. That is the United States. The beast out of the sea is the Holy Roman Empire. Why Holy Roman Empire? We look at Daniel 7. There are four beasts. The last beast will last until Jesus returns. So we have to look, okay, okay, there are empires. How can we know? We compare it to Daniel 2 the statue, four sections in the statue. They're described exactly who these empires are. And then he describes in Daniel 4, same thing. He describes the four empires in form of beasts. And on one of the last beasts sits this little horn. The last beast is different. The last beast transformed into these into this beast with ten horns. It's different. But if you think about what which one of the empires will last to the end, that is the Holy Roman Empire or the Roman Empire. So we have Babylon, Persia, Greece, Rome that turned into the Holy Roman Empire through the horns that will last to the end. And parallel to that last beast that we are seeing described in Revelation 13, the beast out of the sea, we get a next, an, another beast out of the earth that parallels with this last beast. And it steps in when this last beast with the horns and the, the little horn on top gets wounded. Many make a great mistake with that. Many. They think, oh, the wounding has to do with the little horn on top. But no, the wounding is the beast. The beast is being wounded. One of the heads of the beast is being wounded. Not the little horn on the top. But the beast, the, the political system, gets wounded. And while it's wounded, another beast steps in to protect that beast. When is this Roman, Holy Roman Empire, when did it get wounded? When you watched uh, my video about two videos ago about Zionism, that's why I do these videos, you see clearly that after the or during the World War I, these empires were destroyed. Well, they seemed to be destroyed, like Germany, Austria, 
um, Russia, part of it, seemed to be destroyed. Europe. And then, of course, Second World War is going to be even more destroyed. And But was it really, was the political system really destroyed? Or did they again revive afterwards? And right now they are the half the European Union. That is the beast out of the sea. And so parallel to that beast, that beast that helped this wounded beast is, of course, the United States. The United States was invited to the war. And by doing that, now, during this time, you know, when the Holy Roman Empire has to revive again, that beast was protecting them and also came to power very mightily. So that beast out of the earth is the United States. There can be no other empire. See, the thing is, what people don't understand is one empire after the next, there is no gap. There is no gap. There was the Babylonian, then there was the Persian, then there was the Greek, Greece, Greek, and then there was the Roman, the Holy Roman, Euro then the European Union. And of course, then parallel at the end, there is um, the beast out of the, the earth. You, descri you, you read the description of that beast, you can tell who it is. Describes really the USA to the T. Deceptive, putting, uh, ascending down fire from heaven. Of course, others do that too, but specifically, United States does that. And definitely deceptive. That's why he is called the false prophet. What's its deception? It's not a religious deception. It's a political deception. Political deception is what? Ah, we are bringing democracy, but in reality, it's always war and bloodshed and exploitation. Always. So it's a false prophet. So that's what the United States is. The United States is the false prophet. And every president of the United States, at least after Abraham Lincoln, was a false prophet. They brought false democracy into this world. They're liars. When you saw that video with um, the history of Zionism two videos ago, people, you should have learned how governments are dece deceptive, how they are deceitful. They're so absolutely deceitful. And the United States government is not any different. They're worse. They're the worst. They're worse than, than anybody else. Uh, you think the English are, English are bad? Nah. You know, intrigue and deception and lies. Even their own people are not even safe. We saw that again during this election. I hope you saw it. I saw it. Deception, deception, deception. Even the smartest people are being drawn into this deception. Like, for instance, somebody like Kennedy. The question is, does he know that he was drawn into this deception or did he not? Is he just thinking he can do something good for other people? Don't know. But we're living in some very deceptive times. And make no mistake, the false prophet is the United States. So right now, our leading false prophet is Trump. Will he make America great again? No, he will not. He will not have the ability to do that. America is already broke. Humpty Dumpty cannot be put together again. Okay, no matter who is going to step in. No, can't put Humpty Dumpty again. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. 
All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. That's just the bottom line. Will he do something? Yeah, he will do something, but believe me, he will do whatever he has to to stay in power. If he's not doing what he's supposed to be doing, he will be killed. And this time, he really will be killed. And he knows it too. But no, he thinks he can do it. He thinks he can handle it this time, whatever comes. You know, before, during the pandemic, he was just sitting there like a clown. Really, he knew that this wasn't as serious, but really he was supposed to act like he was serious, and he couldn't. And so they got him out and put that Biden in there. That could actually get serious and say, you dummies, you put on either your mask or you get your shut or, you know, how many times do I have to tell you to get your shut? We're going to now really uh, put sanction on you until you have that shot. Well, that, you know, Biden could do that. And I don't think Trump had it. He couldn't do it. Maybe he can do it now because he knew what happened. But anyways, we have what we have now. It doesn't matter whether Trump would have made it or Kamala Harris. He made, They made it look like Trump is going to be the only one. And oh my goodness, if Kamala Harris gets in there, it'll be a disaster. And most people kind of went on the Trump side because maybe they got a little carrot too. You know, like Kennedy got a little carrot. And there's other people that probably thought they get a little carrot like what was the other guys what I mentioned last time you know they all thought maybe now they're going to get a little carrot and you know they get a little piece of the power but anyways this is what we have so somebody asked me last time uh, how about the temple will he build the temple and I'm thinking false prophet builds the temple Oh, uh, okay. If you think so, I mean, I don't see anything in the Bible, but oh well. But the end, the Antichrist will put himself into the temple. Well, actually, the Antichrist will not. It's the man of sin. And when we look at the Bible, Ephesians two, we know the definition of Paul and the temple. I hope you read Ephesians two. Please do that. The definition of Ephesians 2 is that Jesus is the one building the true temple of God with living stones. So the, um, the church is the temple of God. There's not going to be a third temple because that would be a um, it, wasn't, it would be an idol. Period. God is not requiring a third temple. And if they do it anyways, and they will treat it that way, then it will be a false temple. It will be blasphemy. So I don't think God is very happy, would be very happy about that. God destroyed the second temple because he wanted to make a very important point. He wanted to make sure to tell them, listen, this time is over. Jesus is now building the temple. He died on the cross. And he is building the true temple of God right now. You do not need a third or a, uh, a, a temple made out of stones anymore. Well, then how, Second Thessalonians 2, how can this man of sin put himself in a temple? Simply, he puts himself into the church. So think about it. When did somebody ever put himself into the church of God and declared them, himself really God or the head of church, you know, throughout uh, Jesus and the Holy Spirit? And decided, I am going to decide what is doctrine. Who did that, people? If you don't, please think hard. If not, go to Revelation uh, 17 and read the definition of Babylon 
the great. Because that is who this man of sin is, who sets himself into the temple of God, the true temple of God, and proclaims himself that he is God or the representative of Jesus. That's exactly what happened. It's the whore. Who's whoring around with false gods. And this is the only temple that Paul was talking about. Because there's a temple that God is building or Jesus is building. And there's a temple, a false temple. Well, it's not going to be a false temple, but there's not going to be a real temple. So then people say, well, how about that uh, Revelation 11 when John had to measure the temple? Well, that temple was in heaven. John was in heaven and he measured the temple in heaven. Go to the end of Revelation 11. It tells you that the temple was in heaven. So there was, there's never a prophecy that there's going to be a third temple. If they build a third temple... It is not going to be an abomination. Okay? Will the Antichrist sit in it? Well, again, figure out who Antichrist is. Is Antichrist the man of sin, which is Babylon the Great? How did he sit in it? Or is it something you made up yourself? In little stories about dispensationalism, there's going to be this man, this ruler at the end that's going to sit himself in the temple called Antichrist, which is all a lie. It's all made up. They're all fairy tales. Please show me if you can find it. I cannot find it. So is this false prophet Trump going to make sure that we're going to get a third temple so he can put himself into the temple? You know what? Sometimes people think that. But he's going to have to be extremely careful because the wrath of God will be upon him so fast he cannot even think. All his money will not help him. And maybe he knows that already. The thing is also that the Jews, the true, or, uh, true Orthodox Jews know that the temple cannot be built by anybody except Messiah. They know that. They know Zechariah 6. Go to Zechariah 6, the branch. Read it. The branch will build the temple. Who is the branch? The branch is somebody who will combine the kingly, um, what do you call it? Kingly, um, uh, um, oh, oh, kingship. You will combine kingship. And priesthood. That will be Messiah. We know that from from um, Mal, um, from Hebrew seven, that only a Melchizedek type priest can do that, because the king always has to come from Judah. So when there is a king sitting on the throne in the temple. It's impossible under Levitical law because the Levites come, the, the priests come from Levite. But if the king is king from Judah and priest from uh, Melchizedek's order, then that person can be sitting in the temple on the throne. And this is what this branch is. It's Messiah. So only Messiah can actually be building the temple. So they don't need the Levitical priesthood even. Because according to Zechariah 6, they should know that this king has to be from the lineage of David, and that he has to be, according to the order of Melchizedek, a king, I mean a, a priest. Not according to the Levites, because that wouldn't work. I hope you understand my reasoning. 
read uh, Hebrews 7. That is all new to you. So really, the Orthodox Jews, they should know. They should know people. That only Messiah can be that person. And the Messiah can be building the temple. So see right now, this Temple Institute says, well, we're preparing everything until Messiah comes. And what every every year they have a false Messiah. Why? Because nobody can prove that they're really coming from the kingly line of David. They don't have the genealogy to prove it anymore. And if they do, they lie. They will lie, absolutely lie. Because they can't prove it anymore. All the genealogy of everybody, really, they also say, oh, they remember, or they still have the lineages of the Cohen, the priests, but really, do they? Can they really? Proof that they are really from the genealogy of the Levites. Really. But here, that's the problem. But they know it. They know that only Messiah can build the temple. So yeah, those Orthodox Jews are not in a rush to build the temple. Number one, they don't even know where the spot is. The true people in Israel, they know. They don't know where the spot, or they know that it's not up on the Temple Mount. See, they want everybody else to believe that. Oh yeah, we already know the spot and we can start any time. No. That even is the false spot. If they say that is the spot, it's a false spot. That means, again, it's another abomination. The spot is really a little further away from that Temple Mount because that Temple Mount is for Fort Antonia, the Roman fort. So here we got another problem. They don't even know where the temple was. Well, actually, I think they do. They just don't want to tell the public. I think they dug out enough underground in the city of David that they figured out. I was there years ago, and yeah, I think if you see documentaries about their excavations, I believe they know where the temple was. They just don't want to say it. But if they build it on top of the temple, no. It would be an abomination. They don't have to, you know, bomb any of the Al-Aqsa Mosque or, or the Dome of the Rock. They don't have to do that. Those are all building sites of Fort Antonia. And I believe under the Dome of the Rock, there was even a uh, pagan temple. Okay? In a pagan temple. But... People, it's more complicated. People don't want to listen. They just follow. Follow the nonsense of dispensationalism. Again, if you don't know what dispensationalism is, look at my playlist and learn as much as you can about dispensationalism. Because people will, will mislead you. Even when you're in dispensationalism and you start waking up, people are already there trying to convince you they know it all. I know some of these people. I mentioned some of these people. You know that then they will come in and say, oh, the rapture doesn't happen. Oh, dispensationalism is so false, which it is, absolutely. Oh, and Darby was so awful, and okay, which he was. They will mislead you because you don't know your Bible. And you need to go to their Bible and understand what your Bible says. And not your own stuff. If you come out of dispensationalism, you have been very, very deceived. You have been indoctrinated in some bunches of nonsense. Okay, yeah, that is true. And to remove that, takes a while and you have to be careful and don't let anybody in and mess you up more because that's what's going to happen okay satan's going to be right there he's going to oh my goodness he's going to mislead you even more and then when you're done yeah it doesn't matter you didn't get out you just got into a different hole 
So anyways, yeah, let's watch what the false prophet is going to do. Let's watch what Trump is going to do. Is he going to continue to deceive us? Last time, oh yeah, he did deceive us with this coin, this Trump coin, remember? Oh yeah, you know, he was the prophet, right? He allowed himself to be celebrated as the prophet from the Jews and from the Zionist Christians. Will he do the same thing again? He lets himself celebrate as Caesar. Will he do that again? Don't know. But be careful. Be careful also about the people. Yes, they will tell you all kinds of stuff. Oh, Trump this and Trump that. Okay, I believe it. You know, he is the false prophet. It doesn't matter, uh, you know, what it, you know, who would be the president. President is always false prophet. Always. Because he's a representative of the United States. And the United States is the false prophet. And the false prophet is always in the business of the dragon. Remember, he looked like a, a, a lamb, but he spoke like what? A dragon, but he spoke like the dragon. Who is the dragon? That's Satan. That's Satan. Yeah, be careful with this translation. Oh, he spoke like a dragon, but does it really mean the dragon? Why would he speak like the dragon, like Satan? Well, because Satan gave him the power. The United States got its power from this, from Satan. Oh, people are going to say, but no, 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 no. We have democracy and, you know, we have this and we have that and, uh, you know, blah, and all that, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, we're just been getting corrupt lately, and that's about it. And in the last year, you know, we've become liberal and woke and all that. And no, no, Satan has been leading this country for a long time. He's been getting his claws in there for years. That's why we are what we are. Because we've been used, deceived, blinded. Um, what is it? Well, abused, exploited. Okay, tell me more. Give me some comments and what else the United States is doing to its people, squeezing them out like slaves. Oh, yeah, Trump is saying, oh, I'm going to make America great a bit again. Again, Humpty Dumpty couldn't be put together again. And the United States cannot be put together again. It fell. It fell. Had a great fall. And Humpty Dumpty could not be put together again. No, Trump can't do that either. It fell and it's the end of it. And so many people, you know, go with Trump because they think, oh, he's going to save this country. Yeah. It's going to prepare it for the next called World War III. That's what he is doing it, he to, going to do. He's going to prepare everything for this last battle called Armageddon. And where the United States and the beast will be destroyed and thrown into the lake of fire. Do you understand that? That is the, 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 the future of the United States. That they're going to go and, and a battle against Jesus, heavenly hosts, and they will be destroyed during the battle of Armageddon. Revelation sixteen twelve. That's where they're going to be destroyed. That's how this United States, this great country, is going to be destroyed. Oh yeah, this great country. And people, well, you don't want to believe it. That's fine. That's fine. But then look at the history and you tell me how all this end times prophecy fits in. Will there be a new temple, a third temple, a third 
stone temple be built. I'll tell you right now, if they start, God would be so angry, would be so angry. And during the wrath of God, during the time of the two witnesses in Revelation 11, 11 we don't hear anything about a temple existing. They don't say anything about a temple, okay? Nothing is going to be said. So I'm almost thinking, no, there's not going to be a third temple because I don't see it. I don't see it anywhere. Anyways, I'm coming to an end. People at the Holy Spirit guide you. I hope I didn't make a mistake this time. All righty. See you later. Um, and yes, always the Holy Spirit is the most important thing.